Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to use Windows PowerShell to create and configure failover cluster on Windows Server 2022. This will be a two node cluster with one shared disk and a cluster compute resource. First, let's understand the taste lab we will use in this video. We have single domain active directory forest named msaptivwebcast.com. This is a Windows Server 2022 domain controller named SRT22-DC01. This VM will also work as an iSCSI target server. You can set up a dedicated server as an iSCSI target server. This is our node 1 with two network adapters. One for production and the second for cluster communication. You can also add another NIC dedicated for accessing iSCSI storage. This is node 2. We have same settings as node 1 on this VM. Let's go to our domain controller VM. Once the iSCSI target has been installed on server, we need to make some configuration before it can be used in the cluster. In the first step, we will install the iSCSI target on this Windows Server 2022 using PowerShell. Right-click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. Type cmdelete install hyphen Windows feature fs hyphen iSCSI target hyphen server hyphen include management tools. Hit Enter key to install iSCSI target server role on this server. Let's wait for the installation to finish. Next, we are going to create a new iSCSI virtual disk that will be used as the quorum disk in the cluster. For that, I have copied all the commands in this notepad file, so we just need to copy paste it. Let's copy this command and let's go back to the PowerShell and paste it. This command will create an iSCSI target which can be only accessible by two servers SRT22-Node1 and SRT22-Node2. Let's hit enter key to execute the CM delete. The command executed successfully. Next, let's create a virtual disk by specifying the disk storage path and disk size. Let's copy the command again. But before that, let's run this command to get information about the iSCSI target. Let's paste here. We can see the initiator IDs are there, SRT22 node 1 and SRT22 node 2. We don't have LUN mappings at the moment. Let's copy the command to create new virtual disk. Let's paste in PowerShell. Let's hit enter key to create an iSCSI virtual disk named VDisk1 on volume E with a size of 10 GB. The virtual disk is created successfully. Next, we will assign the virtual disk to the iSCSI target created earlier. Let's copy the command to do that. This command will map our virtual disk with our iSCSI target. Hit enter key to execute the same delete. Let's check the iSCSI target configuration again. Type cmdelete get hyphen iSCSI server target and hit enter key. Now we can see LUN mappings are there. We can confirm that it has map with vdisk1. For safe side, let's restart the service. Type cmdelete restart hyphen service hyphen name win target and hit enter key to restart the iSCSI target service. The iSCSI target server configuration is completed on our domain controller. Now we need to configure both cluster nodes to access shared storage using iSCSI initiators. Let's go to SRT22-Node1. Let's open Windows PowerShell. Right click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. First step is to start iSCSI initiator service. Type cmdelete start hyphen service hyphen name ms iSCSI and hit enter key to start the service. Let's change the startup type to automatic. Let's copy the command. This command will change the iSCSI initiator service startup to automatic. Next, provide the iSCSI target server's IP address or host name to connect to the iSCSI target using this iSCSI initiator. 
For that, we need to run this CMD late. Let's copy it and let's paste it in Windows PowerShell. New hyphen iSCSI target portal hyphen target portal address and specify the IP address of iSCSI target server, which is SRT22 hyphen DC01 in our case. Hit enter key to execute this CMD late. Now type CMD late get hyphen iSCSI target and hit enter key to get the target information. Note down the node address. So you can just copy paste the node address from here as well. Already I have copied that address in the notepad file. We can also see the connection status is still false. So let's connect to the iSCSI target. And for that, we need to use this CM delete. Let's copy it and let's paste it inside the Windows PowerShell. Hit enter key to connect to the iSCSI target. Perfect, the command executed successfully. Now again run get hyphen iSCSI target CM delete and check the connection status. This time it should be true. This means iSCSI initiator is successfully connected with iSCSI target server. Now let's check if the iSCSI disk is available on the server or not. Type CMD delete get hyphen disk and hit enter key. We can confirm that the disk is available but it is offline. We need to format the iSCSI disk with NTFS file system. Note down the disk number which is 1 in this example. Let's bring the disk online by running cmd delete set hyphen disk hyphen number which is 1 in our case hyphen is offline dollar false. Let's hit enter key to execute the cmd delete. Let's again run cmd delete get hyphen disk and we can confirm that operational status is online for disk 1. Next step is to initialize the disk and set the GPT partition style for the disk. Type cmd delete initialize disk hyphen number 1 hyphen partition style GPT and hit enter key. Type cmd delete get disk and hit enter key again. We can confirm that the disk 1 is online with GPT partition style. Type cmd delete new hyphen partition hyphen disk number hyphen use maximum size hyphen assign drive later and hit enter key to create a partition on disk 1 with maximum size and assign the disk a later. Note down the drive later which is E in this example. Type cmd delete get hyphen volume and hit enter key. Check the file system of volume E. It is unknown. Let's format the volume. Type cmd delete format hyphen volume hyphen drive later E hyphen file system ntfs hyphen force and hit enter key to format the volume with ntfs file system. Let's again run get volume cmd delete and check the file system. This time it should be formatted with ntfs file system. Let's open disk management to check the status of our disk and volume. Right click on start menu and select disk management. Let me maximize it. We have disk 1 with the size of 10 GB and we have a one volume with drive letter E. Let me close this. Let's open file explorer. We have E drive under windows explorer as well. Let's close it. Now the storage configuration is completed. To be able to configure the windows server failover clustering, we need to install failover cluster feature on our both nodes. Let's copy the command. Type same delete install hyphen windows feature failover clustering have an include management tools and hit enter key to install failover cluster feature on this node. Let's wait for a few seconds to complete the feature installation. Feature has been successfully installed on our node 1. Let's move to node 2. Right click on start menu and select windows powershell admin. We need to run the similar commands on this server as well. First, let's start the service. This command will start MS iSCSI initiator service. Next, we want to set the service startup mode to automatic. Perfect. Let's copy this command and hit enter key to connect to the iSCSI target. The command executed successfully. Type cmd delete get hyphen iSCSI target 
and hit enter key to get the target information. Note down the node address. We can also see the connection status is still false. Let's connect to iSCSI target. You have to copy the node address from the CMD lit. Hit enter key to connect to the iSCSI target. Now again run get hyphen iSCSI target CMD lit and check the connection status. Now it is connected. Type CMD lit get hyphen disk and hit enter key. Type CMD lit get hyphen disk and hit enter key. We can confirm that the disk is available. Now let's install failover clustering feature on this server. Let's copy the command. Press enter key to install failover cluster feature on this node. Let's wait for the feature installation to complete. Failover cluster feature has been installed successfully. Once the failover cluster feature has been installed on both cluster nodes, we can then proceed and configure failover clustering. But first, let's validate a cluster setup with both nodes and its current configuration. If it is successful, then we can create a cluster. Let's copy the command to test a clustering settings. Let's copy this command. So the command is test hyphen cluster hyphen node SRT22 hyphen node 1 SRT22 hyphen node 2. Hit enter key. We are checking if we can create a cluster with two nodes SRT22 hyphen node 1 and SRT22 hyphen node 2. This will perform certain tests on our both nodes as well as it will check its current configuration. If everything is fine, then we can create a cluster using these two nodes. The test completed successfully and the test report is saved on the specified location. The above report shows that we can safely proceed with the cluster configuration. We have some warnings about software update which we can ignore in this test lab. In a production environment, you have to rectify all errors and warnings before proceeding to create a cluster. To create the cluster, we have to specify the nodes, the administrative access point and the IP address of the cluster we want to use. Let's copy the CMD lit to create a cluster. The CMD lit will create a two node cluster with SRT22 hyphen node 1 and SRT22 hyphen node 2. The administrative access point name is SRT22 hyphen CLU01 and the cluster IP address is 172.18.72.58. Let's hit enter key to execute the CM delete. Let's wait for a few seconds to allow PowerShell to create the cluster. The new cluster SRT22 hyphen CLU01 is created successfully. The Windows 2 node failover cluster is now up and running. Let's verify it. Open Server Manager, click on Tools and select Failover Cluster Manager. Let me maximize the window. Here we can see the cluster name is there, SRT22 and CLU01.msftwebcast.com. Expand cluster name and click on Nodes. We can see both nodes up and running SRT22 hyphen node 1 and SRT22 hyphen node 2. So we have successfully created two node Windows failover cluster using Windows Server 2022. But one thing is still missing. Let me show you that. Expand storage and click on disk. We can see we have only one disk which is being used as disk witness in Quorum. We don't have any disk which we can use as a storage. So in the next video, we will see the steps to add shared storage to Windows Server Failover Cluster. That's all for this video on how to create Windows Server 2022 Failover Cluster using Windows PowerShell. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.